Towards the end of the 15th century, a combination of factors led to the emergence of the Age of Discovery and European colonization. These factors included the development of navigational instruments, the quest for quicker trade routes, and religious concerns. The Crusades, a set of religious wars between the 11th and 15th century, provided the religious ideology for the Reconquista or Reconquer, which in turn inspired Atlantic colonization. But chief among these factors was necessity. For centuries, the Silk Road had been Europe's lifeline to the riches of the East, silk, spices, pottery, all flowing through this ancient artery. Enter the Ottomans and the crumbling might of the Mongol Empire, throwing a dark shadow over this traditional land route. The Ottomans, with an iron grip on key routes, posed a menacing threat, making it a Herculean task for Europeans to import the treasures of the East. Faced with this challenge, Europe wasn't about to back down. A fervent desire for new wealth and the will to establish their own trade links with Asia fueled a seismic shift. The result? An explosion of energy and effort poured into the evolution of shipbuilding and navigation. Forget about new lands. It was new routes that captured the dreams of kings, commoners, scholars, and seafarers alike. At the forefront of this mad rush for dominance stood Portugal and Spain, two maritime powers that seized the opportunity to aggressively assert their control over the world's oceans. Prince Henry the Navigator spearheaded Portugal's exploration of Africa and the Atlantic in the 1400s. Portuguese sailors successfully navigated an eastward route to West Africa, where they established a trading foothold. Portugal then spread its empire down the western coast of Africa to the Congo. Their relentless efforts culminated in the groundbreaking voyage of Vasco da Gama, who in 1498 successfully circumnavigated Africa and reached India, establishing a direct trade route that would reshape global commerce. Eventually, Brazil and the Atlantic islands were added thereby kicking off Portugal's exploration dominance. Although the Portuguese did not rule over an immense landmass, their strategic holdings of islands and coastal ports gave them almost unrivaled control of nautical trade routes. For nearly a century, they reigned supreme, establishing trading footholds from South America to Africa and Asia. Portugal's global empire, spanning six centuries, outshone all others, lingering until 1999 when Macau waved goodbye to Portuguese rule and welcomed China's embrace. The Spanish, threatened by the Portuguese monopoly on enslaved Africans and expansion in the Atlantic, started their own colonization project fueled by an insatiable appetite for the Far East riches. Christopher Columbus set sail under the sponsorship of Spanish monarchs Ferdinand of Aragon and Isabella of Castile. Imagine the drama. 12 weeks at sea, sighting land and believing it to be India. Columbus had stumbled upon a brand new world, the Americas in 1492. The competition between the two nations continued and drew a new cast of European players onto the global stage, Britain, France, the Netherlands, and Germany. England, led by the intrepid seafarers John Cabot and Francis Drake, explored the North Atlantic, establishing colonies in North America and challenging Spanish dominance in the Americas. France, under the patronage of King Francis the Me, embarked on expeditions to Canada and the Americas, seeking to establish a foothold in the New World. The French and Dutch greatly challenged the Portuguese and Spanish, while the British were always playing catch-up or were merely picking up the scraps. However, of all the European nations, Britain ultimately went on to become the greatest empire of all. The expansion of the empire was largely due to the East India Company. Having been granted a royal charter from Queen Elizabeth on December 31, 1600, to pursue trade with India, the British East India Company established its first trading station in India in 1612. 
But what started as a small group of businessmen and investors who wanted to benefit from the riches in Asia eventually became so powerful and dominant that by the 18th century it acted as an agent of British imperialism in India. Moreover, it boasted an army of around 260,000 men to protect British interests and also to fend off competition from its fellow Europeans' colonial powers. Liking this topic? As an European explorer in the 1400s, would you be motivated by religious conversion, global market opportunities, or competition with other European nations, and why? Comment below. Smash that like button and subscribe for more. The Battle of Plassey 1757, in which the British East India Company defeated the Nawab of Bengal and his French allies, was a key event in this respect, and although the battle lasted only a few intense hours, it established British dominance in Bengal and the Carnatic, the two most profitable regions of India for European traders. Thereafter, the East India Company gained control of territories across India from Indian rulers and the other colonizers, mostly by means of wars and dewanais, that is, land grants with authority to collect revenue, solidifying British rule in India, with India as the jewel in the British crown. By the early to mid-17th century, Spain, England, France, and the Netherlands were all competing for colonies and trade around the world. Beginning in the late 15th century, explorers, conquerors, missionaries, merchants, and adventurers sought to claim new lands to colonize. It was only a matter of time before imperial rivals butted heads and squabbled over land possession and trade routes. Competition for land grabs, settlement, trade, and exploration led to the growth of New World imperialism and the economic system of mercantilism as much was to be lost on the side of the indigenous Americans and the enslaved Africans who toil on the sugar plantations across the Atlantic. So, dear time travelers, as we recap history over our cup of tea and coffee, remember that the European competition for global dominance wasn't just about ships and empires. It was a saga of ambition, necessity, and intended and unintended consequences that continues to shape our world today. What part of this epic topic fascinates you the most? Drop your thoughts below, and let's dive deeper into the currents of history together. Remember to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more on A Cup of History.